We received heartbreaking and horrifying news this morning of a new massacre committed by the Israeli occupation forces. Today we learned that the U.S. Navy Pier, which was built with the stated aim of delivering humanitarian aid, this Navy Pier was used to hide Israeli occupation forces and humanitarian aid convoys and trucks. showed its ugly face and the ugly face of its empire by hiding Israeli occupation forces and aid trucks only to then unleash fire and fury on people that are seeking refuge, people that are displaced and ethnically cleansed from other areas in Gaza. Yes, sir. 
let them be what they need is munitions, munitions, and munitions. And they know that we, the masses, are a threat to the U.S. Empire and the Zionist state. They know that the power of the masses can bring down this empire to its knees.
He has personally been in many hospitals in Gaza and has seen with his eyes the war crimes committed against the people of Gaza. So please make some noise for Dr. Ben Thompson. Thank <laughs> you. 
ask me? How it was. What can I say? Friends, it's worse than you can imagine. At home, behind our screens, we get a full view of Israel's mass slaughter against Palestinians. But inside Gaza, you feel it. You see it. You hear it. You taste it. When you say goodbye to a friend, you mean it because you genuinely do not know if it will be for the last time. There was yet another massacre today. On my flight back to Canada, I began receiving text messages, voice notes, and videos from friends about airstrikes, about helicopters shooting machine guns into the crowd. The injuries coming into Al-Aqsa Hospital were gruesome. Bloody limbs, men on body parts, a young girl with half her jaw blown off. Shame! The death toll today is 210 and climbing. Israeli forces, with American assistance, have killed those Palestinians today and well over 40,000 over the past eight months. Shame! Having evacuated from Rafa, moving to Mawasi, moving to the middle area, anything in search for a safe space, a safe space that does not exist. I was in central Rafa in early May, listening to heavy artillery fire minutes away from me, while at the same time, watching Biden on the news claiming that the Israeli military was not in Rafah. He lies. <laughs> the one consistent message I receive from my Palestinian friends now is, where do we go? There is nowhere to go. <laughs> the torture and the murder of healthcare workers. I am a mom. I have four children. I am no stranger to the sound of children crying, to the sight of children injured. But a childhood should not see anything more than a skinned knee. But in Gaza, these kids are dealing with flesh melted off of their bodies from the heat of airstrikes. Their bones are crushed from the weight of buildings falling on them. They grieve the loss of their parents, of their siblings, of everyone they love.
happening in Palestine is not a conflict. It's not a war. It's a genocide.
about those that were arrested but we know that they were brutalized for the simple crime of standing for humanity shame Our universities, public institutions, and governments have enormously failed us, 
In Gaza, there are no more universities standing. All 12 universities have been demolished. There is now over 120 encampments worldwide. The advancements of the students of Fada have united us in a principled stance. When one encampment is stormed, we mobilize. When one encampment makes victory, we learn and build on those victories. We leverage other victories for pressures on our own administration. Within our unity, we combat our, our administrations with our liberation zones, and we heighten the contradictions to push Zionist institutions of this country into a crisis. We recommit ourselves today and every day to the struggle for the Palestinian liberation. Palestinians have seen the struggle. We are advancing here in the heart of the empire and they have responded in support and gratitude and have called on us to continue to escalate against the US and Canadian genocidal war machines. We are here to liberate the space and to uphold the skull. We must act with urgency, rage, and mobilization as we have for the past eight months of this ongoing Zionist genocide. While students are gonna be celebrating their graduations for the next month all across Canada, not a single student will be graduating in Gaza. We must continue to remind everyone that not a single student in Gaza is graduating. complicit in the erasure of Palestinian narratives, history, and struggle. And together we will make sure that the voices of the oppressed are heard loud and clear. So let us make this crystal, crystal clear. We will not move, we will not be pushed aside, and we will not rest until our demands are met and the universities are held accountable. satisfied with false solutions. We demand action, we want justice, and we demand actual commitment. What they seem to keep failing to understand is that the more they try to silence us, for the past eight months, we have seen our people being massacred in Gaza. that every day using weapons manufactured, purchased, and transported using our money, using our labor. And for the past eight months, we've been demanding an arms embargo, but the politicians decided to remain deaf. They decided to ignore our demands. We have seen organizers across the world targeting different weapons manufacturers. But this is not enough. We need to diversify our strategies and our tactics. We need to target not just weapon manufacturer companies, but also the companies and institutions that help them, that transport the weapons. And put an end Put an end to the flow of weapons into Israel. Some of these companies are the logistics companies that function as an essential part of the weapons industry supply chain. And they have historically and remain until today a key strategic element of any war effort. So we're announcing today as the Palestinian Youth Movement merged who's one of the leading, leading transportation companies in the world, as one of our main targets. Since October, Maersk has transported more than 300 million of weapons components for, our, for major arms manufacturers from the US. Shame! They ship and transport weapons components to arms manufacturing facilities in the US meaning Maersk actively, actively facilitates the flow of weapons to Israel to use in its criminal war in Gaza. Without Maersk, these weapons would not reach Israel. So again, this is a targeted campaign, a PYM campaign, 
coordinated with multiple cities and multiple countries across the world. And this is a winnable campaign. And we will win this campaign. And we will stop the flow of weapons to Israel. And we will free Palestine. It's our duty. It's our responsibility to take action. To remain, to remain steadfast. Whether it's Gaza, Palestine, or in the belly of the peace. We have a moral and political obligation to protect our people in Gaza. That are facing unimaginable, unimaginable massacres and violence every single day. And our struggle is connected with theirs. It's the same struggle. It's against the same enemy. Whether it's TPS, whether it's, the, whether it's the Canadian government, whether it's the U.S., or whether it's the companies that are allowing the, just, just, the genocide. So let's all be one, June 11th, in front of the mayor's offices in Mississauga. It's our responsibility to raise awareness and to set the narrative that logistics companies are not allowed to ship weapons to Israel. Yeah. And the second announcement is going to be done right now. Just for everyone that did not hear earlier, there was an issue in the back where the Toronto police brutalized and arrested four of our attendees. Shame! Nine months into this genocide, and now they are continuing. They're continuing to repress us, thinking they can intimidate us and slow our movement down. But will they achieve what they want to do? No! no! Will they succeed in distracting us? No! Will they succeed in intimidating us? No! Who keeps us? We need to live by them. And this is how we live by them. There are currently two of the arrestees in 52 division being held by the police and the other two in 55 division. The police are doing this because they know that we can mobilize and put pressure on them to be released and they think that, that if they split them up that we will not show up we will be discouraged from mobilizing Shame. so let us prove them wrong let us prove them wrong let us show up we have to all head to 52 division and 55 division to make sure that the people that were brutalized and arrested are immediately released and we make sure that they are safe and sound in the hands of their community. So, as we disperse here today, we ask you all to please head down to 52 Division and 55 Division, wherever is easier for you. We will also be updating our social media to let you know about any, really, any people that were released and where we need people mobilized the most urgently. And then the last thing I'll say before dispersing, there's also going to be an action tomorrow. It is the annual walk against Israel, which is happening on 600 Shepherd Avenue West in North York. This, this is an action that is a counter protest to the Walk for Israel, which has been happening every year with the Zionists in Canada come together to wave their fascist flag and laugh as our people are going through a genocide. We must make sure that we are showing up to counter their narratives and make sure that we are showing our opposition to what is happening in the fascist, fascist movement the Zionist fascist movement right here in Toronto. In the walk against Israel, the only thing they are celebrating is genocide and occupation. Just this morning, they have killed 250 innocent civilians in 10 minutes. And, and then the next day, and the next day, they will go to wave their fascist flags, celebrating 
the fact that they have killed thousands of civilians and monsters! So let us make sure that we're keeping this angry energy high. Whether it's in the rain or in the snow or in the blistering heat, we have a responsibility and a moral obligation to do every single thing we can to push this movement further and push the needle and weaken our enemy. And when we say our enemy, that is not just a Zionist state and uh, the so-called Israeli government, but we are talking about the ideology of Zionism and every institution which upholds this ideology of Zionism. So, before we disperse, we ask you all again to please, please, show up to 52 Division. We're, go sorry. We're going there together, we're going to start marching to 52, and some people are going to 55. So let's keep this going. We're going to march right now. About the government, both federal, provincial, and even municipal. Almost every single government and level of government in this country is complicit in the genocide that is happening in Gaza. That is one thing. That is just one part of this complicity. That also includes the media, which have crafted their narratives, which have dehumanized Palestinians and demonized them and manufactured consent for this genocide. Shame! And this also includes institutions like banks and universities who are guilty with blood on their hands by investing in the arms manufacturers that are dropping bombs and chemical weapons on our people in Gaza. Shame! And finally, last but not least, this country is complicit in the genocide by weaponizing their police forces against the peaceful protesters that are doing nothing but calling for an end to this genocide. Shame! Shame! So let us stick together as one. Let us stand united. Which also 
powerful means that DPS is trying to help the Zionist entity by arresting our comrades and by silencing us on these streets. Shame! 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 What's happening in Gaza is the most important thing. We come out here every single day, every single weekend to stand against the genocide, to stand against our government, not taking a stand against Israel. But these officers support the genocide. These officers are directly complicit in the genocide of Gaza. If you can't use your voice, use your hands. If you can't use your hands, use your feet. Make noise no matter what. So our brothers and sisters inside, 